but today we're going to be doing a video on like what gear I use, what I ride in, what my typical riding gear is, that kind of stuff. So I always have my bare minimum to go riding is at least a helmet and gloves. I like to wear more, but I'm not going to lie, sometimes I don't wear like a jacket and stuff. Sometimes I'll just ride in a t-shirt, which I know is dumb, but it, I'm being honest. So first things first, helmet. I have a Shoei RF 1400 helmet, which I absolutely love. It's paired with a Cardo Packtalk Edge and I have the 45 mil speaker upgrade in it. I absolutely love this helmet. It has the blue mirrored visor, which I'll put the price for everything in when I'm editing this video. But I love this helmet. It's comfortable. It's not too big. It's very light and has a bunch of vents all over. Has vents on the top. Has vent here. I usually always ride with at least this one open. And it has a pin lock for the visor, which I'll show you in a sec. Let me take all my gloves out of my helmet. So the visor came with, well the helmet came with a pin lock system. I have a clear visor and the blue tinted mirrored one, which I ride 99% of the time with this one. Occasionally, depending on how dark or whatever it is, sometimes at night rides I'll put the clear one on, but for the most part I just use this one. You get used to it over time. Um, but it has a pin lock, which I don't know if you can see these little pins on each side. It has a little shield that goes in, if it'll focus, right in here. So you have to take the visor off to get that in there. But basically what it does is it will make a vapor barrier and help your visor from not fogging up, which is absolutely amazing. I love it so much because normally before that, I would have to ride with the visor like crack at the bottom, which during the summer, it's not bad, but once it gets cold, it's very, very annoying. But the pin lock makes it so it doesn't fog up like at all. Um, I have to clean it. I have to take the pin lock off and clean it and re-add it because depending on like, if it's like really, really, really cold, sometimes it'll fog up like the tiniest bit, but it game changer. So that definitely would recommend a Cardo or intercom system. I have the, like I said, the Pack Talk Edge. And this enables me to connect with my friends for say I'm going out to ride with Nate. We connected once when we go to meet up, if we're within a certain distance of each other, it automatically like links our chats together. So it's like almost like proximity chat, which is kind of funny because we'll be riding around and like once I get close, I'll be like, oh, hey, like he'll say something. I'll be like, oh, okay. And like sometimes we'll just stumble upon each other, which is funny. And you can connect up with a bunch of people with this one. It has controls all on the outside, so you can change volume, adjust like how loud your stuff is. You can switch songs. You can ask it to do stuff. You can take phone calls, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely love it. Definitely would hate to ride without it. The charge lasts really long, and it's just a must for me. One more quick note for helmets. Don't make the same mistake I did. When I first got the bike, first time, like first bike, first whatever, so I didn't have any gear, so I wanted a helmet, obviously. So I bought a cheap helmet. It was like 250 bucks or something. And just honestly, just save up and buy a good helmet straight off the bat because it's gonna save you money in the long run. So you're not gonna have to go and upgrade and buy a different one. I, am, I wish I would have bought this one straight from the start. The noise cancellation in it, like the wind noise reduction, is really, really good on one of these. The protection is outstanding. I mean, this is either gonna, this is gonna save your life, like, literally. Um, it also has the like emergency strap pads. So say I do get into a wreck, instead of them having to like try and like pull the helmet off me and like if it shifts my neck or something. These snap out so you can slide the helmet right off and then they snap back in, which is nice. But yeah, definitely don't cheap out on a helmet. Next set of gear is gloves. So I have three sets of gloves. It all depends on 
the weather and like what kind of riding I'm doing depending on what gloves I'm gonna wear. My usual go-to if the weather is nice are my Alpine Star. I forget the exact model, but I'll find them and put them up on the screen. But these are more like summer-ish gloves. They're not long. They don't have like the gauntlet on them. They're not overly thick. They're still very protective and you can still use your phone with them, which is nice so you don't have to like take your phone off or take your gloves off to text somebody back if you're at a stoplight or trying to change music or whatever. They're comfortable. I like them. They're not warm like at all. So if you are doing winter riding or riding in the cold weather, wouldn't recommend these. Like I said, they're comfortable. I, I like them for the summer and for when it's warmer out. And I like them because they're extremely broken in. I've had them for a couple months now and they're very broken in and comfortable to wear. So if it's really cold out, like really, really cold, I will wear snowmobiling gloves. They offer little to no protection, but they're warm. They're very warm. And for those who ride in the winter and don't have heated grips, cold hands, your hands is what gets cold the quickest and is the worst because then your fingers start to kind of like, like stiffen up and it's really hard to use your clutch and your brake and everything and it gets a little sketchy. Eventually I want to get heated grips or heated gloves or something, but these work good for when it's like super cold and I still want to go riding. Um, like I said, they're very, they're bulky, they're big, they're bulky. They cut out a lot of the wind and they're really warm, but offer little to no protection if you do fall. And then the third set, which these are new, I still have to break them in, but they're the Handroid gloves. I don't really, the MK5s, they are freaking awesome. I absolutely love these gloves. They're, they still need to be broken in because they are very stiff. But they have a couple cool features to them. So these are for more like track inspired riding. And they do good when it's cold out, but not like super, super cold. The wind still gets through them. So they are like the gauntlet style. So they do come up pretty far. They have a strap here. And then they have this cool little ratcheting system to like keep them tight and they have a lot a lot of padding on them the whole front is all protected it's they're thick they're leather uh, you can still actually use your phone with them which is cool like I said they're very stiff still they need to be broken in they have protection pads here and here and like they're the gauntlet style so they are really nice for when it's cold because it does come up and you can put your jacket underneath them so the wind doesn't come up your up your sleeves and stuff. I will probably end up wearing these during the summer at some point too, but I don't like, it, it all depends. I don't know. But these are for more like track use or if you're really riding hard, but they also have a lot of protection. But curious to see how bad my tan lines get with these if I use these during the summer. But very good gloves. I'll put all the information from them up on the uh, up on the screen. And then that's it for my gloves. So definitely recommend getting a good set of gloves. I think these are still my favorite the Alpine Star ones. They're very comfortable. They're super broken in. They're not like big and overly hot. Like they're they're pretty hot in the summer, but I mean I live in South Carolina, it gets hot gets like really hot, so. But I'd rather ride with gloves and have my hands a little hot than trash my hands if I do bail. And then another set of gear that I use is I always try and ride with a jacket, especially when it's cold. This one is uh, the Sedici one. I forget the actual like model of it, but it is, actually really comfortable. It's not overly thick, but it has a liner on the inside too, so you can take it out for when it gets like super hot. It has a liner. The downside to it is that during the winter, for winter riding, I mean it's not a winter jacket, but it cuts out most of the wind, but not 100% of it. 
you still feel it. But it's cool because it has pads in the shoulders, pads in the elbows, and then also a pad in the back. This, the pads that it came with are the shoulder and the elbow pad are pretty, pretty good, but the back one is just very like flimsy, just like foam. But you can get inserts to actually like that are better, like protect your spine and everything. So I'm eventually gonna get one of those. And I don't know, looks cool. It's got decent pockets on it. Has, I think it has some pockets on the inside too, but they're underneath this liner, which is kind of annoying. Like it has like a, I think a phone pocket. Yeah, it has a phone pocket, but it's underneath the liner. And it has the zippers on the sleeves. And then it has obviously the regular zipper. It's got a pocket up here. Not one on this side. And then it has two zipper pockets here so you can put stuff in and zip them close so you don't have to worry about things flying off your person while you're riding and all that. But a good jacket is always good, especially with the, the padding in them, just in case you do bail or slide out. Always a good thing to have protection. And then the last piece of gear that I have, that I have been riding with a lot more recently, is Trek boots. Let me take one of these off so I can show you guys. But I've seen too many videos of people like bailing and riding in vans and everything and how quickly they disintegrate when you're riding. Ugh. It just, but your toes just disappear. It's, so I bought a set of track boots. Yes, I know, I probably look goofy riding around, going into stores if I have to grab something, wearing freaking track boots and carrying a helmet, but I don't care, I like my feet. But these are the Sedici track boots. They weren't overly expensive. I think they were like somewhere around like 200 bucks, 230, I think. But I think I got them on sale for 200. It's cycle gear. They have a lot of protection here. They're very like stiff. Leather, they're warm too, which is nice. They have a zipper on the side and a strap. They're, like I said, very like stiff and like rigid and protective. The one thing that I will say is when you do buy track boots or if you do buy track boots, break them in, wear them around the house. You know, do the, the thing where you just like massage them, try and loosen everything up because riding in track boots for the first time is so different from riding with like vans on. You can't feel nearly as much for when you're shifting and for the brake and stuff. I'm used to it now because I've been riding in them for a while and they're like broken in and comfortable, but definitely break them in. I just wear them around the house and just walk around in them, get used to them, all that stuff. I think personally, I think they look cool, but I know people give me weird looks while riding around. I can never tell if they're just like, oh, that guy's really cool. Probably not. But usually it's, I don't know, I feel like they're like, oh, look at that guy, he's wearing stupid boots. It's fine. It's fine. I'd rather keep my feet. But, yeah. So, that's the gear list that I have for right now. I still want to get some more gear. I want to get the, like, the armored pants. I forget the brand name. But they uh, they sell like they're jeans. They look like jeans, but they're like Kevlar, and they have like the the knee pads and like the stuff on your hips and your butt for if you do go down and slide. I really want to get a pair of those. They're a little pricey, but it's worth it in my opinion. But and they look like regular jeans, which is cool. If you're looking to get into motorcycles and stuff, please do your research and buy gear, good gear to start out. Don't. Try and buy some of your gear before you even have a bike because it's worth it to have gear. Like, at least get a good helmet, at the very least. Helmet and gloves. Yeah, I think that's all I have for this video. And if you guys liked and enjoyed, please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I'm going to be trying to make a lot more content this season and this season, this year. Especially with this thing and possibly something else. 
but not saying too much because I don't know what's going on with that. Still have the E46 drift car, which I have to, I have so much stuff that I have to do to that and take to events and we'll do some more videos on that. But for now, that's it.